The Books Tab X is just one of those devices that if you know that it's gonna fit in your workflow, man, is it gonna fit in your workflow. <laughs> if you know it's right for you because you like to read lots of academic documents, or if you need to be able to focus on two apps at a time, or even just two pages in the same notebook at a time, then you'll love using the split screen mode. And essentially, you'll have the same real estate as if you had two 10.3 inch ink tablets side by side. This is everything I know about the Tab X. And I spend a lot of time making my videos look as good as I can and sound as good as I can. So have you considered actually putting this video up on your 4K TV and just settling back with a drink and really enjoying the content? I'm sure by the end of this video, you will have a really good idea of whether the Tab X is the right device for you. These ink devices aren't cheap. And certainly these 13.3 inch devices, well, you need to know they're gonna make a difference before you spend that amount of money. And as always, go ahead and check out the links in the description so you can see the latest prices right now. The Tab X has a 13.3 inch screen, and that is essentially the same size as an A4 piece of paper. It also comes with a book super refresh technology, which means that you get this amazing screen clarity, amazing screen performance, but it is a black and white screen and it doesn't have the highest resolution because it's blown up to that size. You're only down at just over 200 dots per inch essentially. But I can happily tell you that you don't really notice that lower pixel density in everyday use. And certainly if you're someone who needs to read large documents, then having the larger screen size is more important than the higher resolution. So settle back, let's jump into this first part, which kind of gets you started with a story of your very first impressions and what they might be like when you unbox the Tab X. Another unboxing from Books. Thank you so much to Books for sending this out so that I can make this unboxing video and a full review after using it at work. To say that I'm excited about this one is a bit of an understatement because I do really like I do really like using the large screen e-ink tablets that are out there that I've used before. And I have really enjoyed using the Tab Ultra, which is the latest in the 10.3 range. And what they added to the Tab Ultra was a GPU, as well as a keyboard case. So this is a Tab X, which is branded slightly different to previous books devices, because this now says books make a difference rather than like a tablet, unlike any tablet. I think they thought that the GPU worked so well in the Tab Ultra, that you might as well put it in the Max Lumi 3 that they were planning. And so we got this, the Tab X. And I suppose the X is where it links back to that Max and Max Lumi branding. Here it is, let's have a look. They have gone for this new Books branded. It took me a while to work out that this was B00X, this pattern, Books. Always really nicely packaged. Always a nice unboxing experience. And now it seems certainly these flagship Books tablets are coming with the Pen2 Pro. Brilliant. Although here's another example of where it just seems they've upgraded the Max Lumi, which didn't have the magnetic snap. They've given you a pen, which does have the magnetic snap. Maybe just a little bit more thought could have gone into that. But who's complaining? You've got the premium pen and you've got the documentation. Interestingly, on this little tab, it says the 13.3 inch series. So that is an interesting distinction that they've been making. That's something I've not heard them discuss it as the 13.3 inch series before. And that is one thing you get used to with books. Their names aren't always logical. Wow. This is really, really nice. From the Lumi line, gone is the home button. The previous generation of Lumi, the Lumi 2, did get rid of the HDMI port on the back there, which was something that people didn't like. We've got the USB-C port at the back, which can do OTG. I have accidentally touched the uh, on button, which is on the top as I did that, which is great. So it's booting up now. So I think the 13.3 inch is always going to be where the people who are inclined towards productivity are going to go. And the GPU does make a difference in terms of productivity apps. It does mean that the device, when it's enabled with the GPU, can handle third-party apps that little bit better. I like the fact that now you can just have a normal navigation bar, and this one is most like what, what I'm used to. You get your e-ink center, refresh, 
recent home and back. It just means I don't need to remember all the gestures from books when I'm going from one Android device to another. So I do hope that we'll see a 13.3 inch, maybe Tab X Ultra in the future, because that would really suit me. I think that this size, if it had its own keyboard case, would be what they are advertising this as being this size would be an actual tablet PC. So I know that I'm already gonna love this. I'm really excited to be tested this out for work for the next two weeks or more. If you're uninitiated on books and what they're all about, then the standout benefits are that you get full Google Play. So you get access to the full Google Play store. That way you can use any Android app at all. Also, however, there is great reading and note-taking apps as well and i'll show you off those as well and so books is the one you want to go for if you know you want to do more on e-ink and another one big reason why that is is because they give you access to these different screen modes if you're used to the kindle or you've looked at remarkable you don't have any control over how the screen behaves how it behaves is just how they've set it up to behave and it works just fine with their own apps but when you get into using third-party apps then you need to have these options and the gpu allows these four different options the hd mode where you get this beautiful crisp screen the balance mode where you can see a slight loss in detail some slight ghosting and the ghosting is the e-ink sometimes leaves a little imprint of what it had previously showed when it just refreshes part of a screen or fast mode which now will go to much higher frames per second but you will lose some detail and you will get some um, more ghosting but that's better for things like browsing a web page and now they've added the ultra fast mode with these gpus and that actually you do get more detail loss but really you can you can watch videos on this thing there's also dpi setting and what the dpi setting does is it changes the sort of effective dpi of the app and what it's showing so it can essentially change the scaling of the app i'm going to leave that initially on at 207 and 207 is the native dpi of the screen so that will just allow things to scale to this size because as you can perhaps see the little app icons are really big on the screen because it is a interface that they've designed for a smaller tablet and i think that's one question that voya raised really was that they should be redesigning the user interface for the larger screen. And you also get dark color, so contrast essentially, enhancement, light color enhancement, enhancement to allow you to optimize the screen for third party apps. The default apps, the first party, the books apps always run brilliantly on the ink. But for third party apps, it's, it's brilliant to have these customizations. The other thing about books that you should know is that they aren't always easy to use because they can do so much more. They're very complex devices. And because they're quite committed really to giving you updates as quickly as they can and add features that competitors have or that people suggest that they have, and there is a really good way to give that quick feedback through the settings. And they actually work on those suggestions really quite quickly. So they add features very quickly, but it does mean that the menus are quite, um, complex and that can make it difficult to just do some slightly simple things it's the type of devices that you should look at and go for if you're used to working with technology and you're used to understanding complex tech and if you're happy on Android you may be using an Android phone you'll be happy on books tablets as well so it's talking about individual app optimization and the nice thing is once you've set an app optimization it will remember your preferences for that app optimization so I'll go ahead and get this all set up and signed in and everything like that but just really quickly I'll just put it side by side with the first the Max Lumi I think it is ever so slightly thinner I'm sure I've read this somewhere. Yeah, you can perhaps just see the actual container seems to be the same thickness, but the Max Lumi, actually the screen stands a good millimeter sort of proud of that. And that's meant that the whole Books Tab X is a tiny bit thinner than the Max Lumi, which is nice. The processors are all upgraded. Everything seems to be quite upgraded about the Max Lumi. I'm gonna take off this screen protector because otherwise it wouldn't be a fair comparison with the Max Lumi. But there you are, you can see side by side, they're essentially exactly the same size. They are the same size. The home button's gone. They've added this little bit of books branding down the bottom there, which is welcome. It just makes it a tiny bit more stylish, I suppose. You can see the home screen is now totally different. So the older books devices have this home screen where you've just got apps and library up the side here. And now the home screen is what I would consider to be a normal Android home screen. But let's just go into the notepad for both. A slight different color to the two. Let's add any notepad in here.
Yeah, it's a textured kind of screen, but it's not massively a paper-like screen. and I'm not seeing much difference there in terms of the screen feel. It's a yeah, I think you can see, probably won't see it much on this video because it's only 25 frames per second, but you can see a tiny bit less lag here on the Tab X. I'm not sure it's really as good as the Tab Ultra in terms of its sc screen speed. Getting a slight bit of, yeah, it does on both. It's always a bit funny if you get a funny end of the line like this. The Max Lumi, I certainly wouldn't kick it out of bed. <laughs> it certainly is still a fantastic device as well. But I have absolutely loved us using the Max Lumi. And I'm sure I'm gonna love using the Tab X. But I also loved using the Tab Ultra. And one thing that I've loved using on the Tab Ultra is the keyboard case. Am I going to miss that? Let's just see if there's a notable difference in speed between the Tab Ultra and the Tab X. Not that I'm going to notice with the naked eye or with the 25 frames per second video, I think. You can maybe just see that it's sort of in this it's updating in a sort of more like an area as that comes across there. If I show you a still from each, you might just see something there. And the keyboard case made it very natural to use this around things like email and other productivity tasks. So, so I'm interested to know whether I'm still gonna be keen to use the Tab X for those tasks, given that if I wanted to do that on a keyboard, I'd have to pair a Bluetooth keyboard. I don't think I'm gonna do that every time I want to type something. I'm just gonna rely on the laptop probably. And another interesting thing is that e-ink is always renowned for amazing battery life. And that's certainly impacted by the GPU. The question is, how much is it impacted by the GPU? And it'll also be interesting to know how much use I get out of the split screen, which is amazing when you get to this size of device, because there's absolutely no doubt this size of device is geared towards productivity. And when you have essentially an A4 screen, which you can have two half screens two A5 screens essentially next to each other, then there's no doubt that this is gonna be beneficial for productivity tasks. So I'll get it set up and I'll let you know my first thoughts after just a few days and I'll be back with a full, after two weeks using it at work, full review of this device. So I've been using the Tab X for a few days now and I've had the chance to do my planning for the next fortnight on it and I've had the chance to go ahead and do a drawing on it as well and I can tell you that I'm quite impressed so far and I'm going to go ahead and give you my sort of opinions on it. This is one thing I did find whilst I was drawing is that when you've got a lot of brush strokes it does this, I'm rendering a lot at the minute, you know, please wait and I would really love to see books come with a dedicated drawing app such that we could really get the best out of drawing on this amazing tablet because drawing at this large size on this wonderful screen with the excellent books brush tools is fantastic but clearly it this is a notes app which is optimized for taking notes rather than for drawing and I'd love to see books actually come with their own dedicated drawing app because they do a great job of that. But I'm going to talk more about e-ink for drawing in other videos and today I'm just going to talk through my first thoughts after using it for a little while. So the first question is this is only 207 dpi and are you missing out and I think well, the answer is no because you're actually comfortably reading this from a further distance away from the screen and so it's not really so noticeable. 207 dpi is good enough to generally at this sort of distance be undiscernible to the naked eye. It's fine. The one thing I did notice when I was setting it up and I've just set up a different Android tablet that asked me if I wanted to pull down all of my details from Google and you know essentially if you buy a new phone what happens with Android is it says do you want to sync all of your contacts all of your apps and everything like that and actually I think there is a middle ground really that books could actually look at doing, letting you sync a little bit more to a book's tablet to make it more like, wow, I'm straight at home, I've got all of my apps with all of my data. And that's an interesting avenue for books to think about exploring. Whether or not they'd have to release their source code to allow Google to let them do that, 
I don't know. An interesting point is when I first booted this up, I could actually feel where the GPU is. It is actually a little bit warmer just here. And I've got some shots of this on my infrared camera, which actually show that this area does get warmer. And I want to compare that really to the books Max Lumi and see if that is clearly noticeable because the GPU we think is making this line of tablets, the tab line of tablets actually have a worse battery life than the ordinary books line of tablets. It could be where the GPU is, it could be where the CPU is, but certainly this area gets actually noticeably warmer, not like hot, noticeably warmer, and that means that it's using a lot of energy. And it's actually noticeably warmer just now. So I did think maybe it was just as I was downloading new apps from the App Store and it was really running that CPU quite high, but actually even now, just having booted up and doing this bit, it's already doing that. The interesting point that Voya made about the scaling. Now actually these icons look too big on this screen because these icons and this whole layout was made for the Tab Ultra. We don't need them this big on this huge screen. We need them to be scaled to actually make more use of this extra screen real estate. Boy also pointed out that look, the, the text here is getting cut off. And I do think that they should look at doing an update to allow me to have double the number of apps actually shown on this home screen, please. More details and certainly not having this point with some text cut off. For instance, there was just a space on the home page where the camera app had been on the Tab Ultra. So they'd not obviously put in a camera app or a scanning app and they just left the space there. But then a lot of the time I'm gonna use this in split screen. So they also need to get the scaling right in split screen mode, which then it does look fine. So when you're in split screen mode, now these apps do look the right size and actually so does this text over here as well and this if you're going to buy a big device like this you're going to use it a lot on split screen this is where i'm going to spend a lot of my time handwriting recognition is absolutely on point now across the device so wherever you are in the device the handwriting recognition is actually excellent no, i just didn't want to show that no, that is absolutely weird so what's going on there Maybe that's another point about this sort of scaling up to this larger size. Not a deal breaker in the slightest bit. Lots of useful settings as well. One thing about handwriting recognition is it's useful for you to learn how it likes to see characters. So the way I do my X's is these curly X's sort of math script X's, then it doesn't really like that input. And of course, if you don't like the books keyboard, you can download the Google Gboard or any input method of your choice from Android. So there's so much of an ability to customize the input to the, what you want. I used to recommend that's the first thing you should install on a books tablet, but actually they've improved the books keyboard to the point where I, I actually use the books keyboard now. A question about this sort of size of device is, is it gonna be too heavy? Surprisingly, no, not really. You know, it is obviously heavier than a smaller tablet, but it isn't too heavy by some distance. It's, it's a nice sort of weight for its size. The interesting thing, I didn't know this before, but actually lots of things you can actually hover over with the pen. So you can see you can sort of half press things and sometimes that brings up menus. So for instance, in Google Drive, so where I've maybe got something with longer titles, just by hovering over the pen, it will actually bring you that kind of half press menu, which is a useful thing to know that this technology can actually do. I don't know if other e-ink tablets do that. Certainly something that I haven't used before on others. So yes, I did some drawing on it. I've shown that at the start here as well. I'll play a little bit of a time lapse, why not?
it is really, really good for drawing. I was a bit surprised when I got to the end of its kind of buffer and it did this large rendering and there was a bit of a delay there, but that's absolutely fine. It would be better for drawing if they could iron that out because well, it's not something you see on an iPad or other Android tablet it doing that in a dedicated drawing app. So that's what I want to see next. One absolute joy, and perhaps you're considering this or something like a Kindle, will be reading a Kindle book or reading any book, of course, but with side-by-side -side mode with a notebook. You can read a Kindle book on this side and you can take notes on a full A5 size notepaper on this side. I mean, that is absolutely splendid. Depending on the type of reading that you want to do, this might blow the Kindle scribe out of the water as an option. So let me know what demos you want. I'm gonna do a Tab X versus Lumi side-by-side -side video coming soon, and I'm gonna do a Tab X versus versus Tab Ultra side by side. Let me know what demos you want to see on this and what comparisons you want to see me make. I'm also interested in doing this drawing in London, you know, maybe going to an art gallery and actually working with the tablets in the art galleries and doing some nice drawings and seeing what they can really do. I just wanted to point out something about the pencil now having tilt. That's great, I'm absolutely made up that it has tilt, but it doesn't have much of a range of tone with pressure. A little bit, but not a great deal. It's, it's not as easy to arrange the tone for the very, very light tones, at least, as it is on the Remarkable or the Kindle Scribe. However, unlike the Remarkable and the Kindle Scribe, you do have in the pencil tool different shades of gray. So for the very light tones, you can use the lighter gray and that can give you a nice drawing effect as well. But it doesn't sort of put down less graphite, it's just a lighter toned graphite. So it can still work really, really well, but it doesn't have the tilt, doesn't have the sophistication of the Kindle Scribe tool or the Remarkable Pencil tool either. It's good though. My very first thoughts on this, I'm absolutely loving being back to planning and working at this full size on e-ink. And I am loving drawing at this full size as well. I'm really pleased with the, the case. Again, they're going for these nice green tones, this nice professional looking notebook here. I'm excited to be once again working on a full A4 sized ink tablet. It's fantastic. If you've never tried that out, I think, yes, it costs a lot, it's worth it. I'm gonna miss the keyboard case. I do wish they brought a keyboard case out with this one. I'm hopeful that'll be in a future A4 tablet from books, but I'll be relying on the handwriting input and the voice recognition, which are excellent on books as well. So stay tuned for the full review once I have used this for those two weeks, and I'll be back with my full, my really, thought out thoughts on this device. So as you can see, I was pretty excited and pretty impressed by this straight out of the box. It's a very exciting device. It's really, it's a change from previous generations of e-ink tablets in terms of the way that they are expecting you to use the device. Books are really saying that this is no longer really just an e-reader with note-taking functionality. This is a productivity machine. And that's why I was really quite surprised that they didn't bring it out with the keyboard case like the Tab Ultra. This really seemed to me to be the next in line from the Max Lumi devices. And they kind of closed that category, closed that line of devices when they upgraded to the Book Super Refresh technology. Now I have to say that living with the Book Super Refresh technology and they they don't not put that on any device now. That always comes with any new device. It is by far and away the best experience of e-ink that you can get. However, we realized as you saw me testing some of the heat dissipation there. However, we have realized in the e-ink community that that book super refresh technology does come at a cost with the battery life. It's not terrible, but it's not brilliant either and e-ink devices were famous for their excellent battery life. One thing to say before we go on and I show you my comparison between it and the Max Lumi. If you do own a Max Lumi, it isn't probably enough of an upgrade to go ahead and get the book's Tab X because it's still doing its job perfectly well, I'm sure. But if you are the owner of another book's device, for instance, the Tab Mini or any of the Nova Air lineup or the Note Air 3C, then you might want to consider adding a 13.3 inch device into your e-ink lineup. This does something different and I'm always impressed every single time I get this out and use it, I'm always impressed by how good it is to work on a screen at this size. It really does get the thumbs up from me. So let's carry on and see if there's actually any real world difference between the Tab X and the previous generations of Max devices. So I have been using the Tab X for about a week now at work and I have to say so far I'm absolutely loving it. But I absolutely loved using the Max Lumi as well, so I thought today I'd do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison to point out some differences and to, well, let's see what 
the performance boost is in going up to the latest, the Tab X. One of the biggest questions is going to be how much of a difference is that GPU going to make? Because that is the biggest difference in the specification. There isn't that much difference between the Tab X and the Max Lumi 2 in terms of the processor, in terms of the RAM, they've both got that 6 gig of RAM. In terms of the storage, they've both got that 128 gig of storage. Both the same pens, they're both the same screen. There is a slight difference in terms of the actual thickness. The Max Lumi is a little bit thicker because the screen just sticks out a little bit of the case and this just feels like a little bit more flush. It's a little bit thinner. It does feel like the update that you're expecting. And the only other big difference is the battery. So what's the impact on the screen performance of that GPU, but also what's the impact of the battery on that GPU? So I'm gonna get them both booted up. I don't know if you saw my unboxing and first thoughts video and I actually noticed when I booted the Tab X that actually this little area got hot. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my infrared camera here to actually film them both at the same time for the same boot up and then do the same download of something do the download the same app on both of them essentially we'll see whether or not one of them does get hotter in that area than the other so it should be an interesting week comparison but also we're going to see what's the difference in terms of their boot up speed and their performance in actually downloading apps and we should be able to get a first view of how the screen is the same or different I can definitely see they're both cold, they're both booting up from nothing. Which is the Tab X on the right hand side and the Max Lumi on the left. Both seem to have booted up in just about the same amount of time. And I'm not actually seeing any difference whatsoever currently in terms of them heating up. But I can start to see slight heat spot now coming from this one, coming from the Tab X. It is getting hotter, there is no doubt about that. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we download from the Play Store. Okay, let's pop Readly on both. We don't see much of a difference, in fact, to be entirely honest, on the camera in terms of that heat up, perhaps a little bit. Yeah, I can feel that sort of warm spot on both. So there isn't much of a difference there between the two big ones. Obviously that is something, I did see a difference between the Tab X and the smaller devices. So that is perhaps the size of processor, the sort of speed of processor in this larger Max Lumi or Tab X device that's actually doing that extra heating rather than the GPU. Cool. Okay, so that's that first comparison. Now one obvious change between the Max Lumi 1 or the Max Lumi 2 and the Tab X is gone is the home button, which is actually quite useful, but now they've given you these Android style uh, toolbars at the bottom, and I really prefer that to be quite honest. So the other spec change is the battery size. The battery has grown considerably to about 6,000 milliamp hours here, compared to only 4,000 milliamp hours here. So obviously that GPU is having an impact on the battery, but they've also given you the larger battery to um, mitigate for that. And I think where Tab X is really going to excel compared to the Max Lumi is in the other apps. So let's go ahead and look at today's video sponsor, which is UPDF. UPDF stands for Universal, Productive, Delightful and Fast. On the Android app, you can read and you can annotate, but on the full desktop app, you can edit everything. You can move, edit, resize and reformat text. You can resize or replace images. You can do OCR, which means optical character recognition. You can fill out forms and combine files into one PDF and you can add security to. The way I personally use my e-ink tablets for planning is to make a modified PDF and it's got my entire Fortnite timetable down. But there are loads of PDF planners available and if you found a PDF planner template that you liked then you could actually go in and edit it with UPDF without having to have the original Word file. So if you like the format but you just needed to say a couple of extra words here or there then you could do that in UPDF. In fact, you could make a PDF for everything that you wanted to plan on your e-ink tablet. Check the link in the description and the pinned comment for 50% off UPDF. You'll get one license which you can use across iPad, iPhone, Android, Mac, and Windows. And let's see which of these two great devices work best with UPDF. They both look absolutely fabulous, I must say. Let's get them both to the exact same lighting conditions. Yeah, they're both on full cold and zero warm. So I would normally run both of these devices with about sort of a quarter or a third of both and then you'll sort of see them matched up in terms of brightness and they both look really good i like that the tab x has the refresh button here 
on the bottom menu if you like whereas on the Max Lumi I'm using the navigation ball to get myself a refresh button at any time there are gestures that you can do that with as well let's while we're talking about brightness let's go through the full range I think that the Tab X does look better on full brightness than the Lumi does I think that there's just a little bit more even lighting here on the Tab X there's less of a kind of gradient of the colors you can see it's brighter at the side less bright in the middle and that's because this front light is having to fire across the screen down and reflect up into your eyes let's have a look on some other apps and also on full brightness you can see that this one has got a lot more of an orange color than the tab x does go back down to the sort of area i would use them at. let's go ahead and go to eWritable, which is a website that i've collaborated on to provide some of my own collaboration data and on this one i'll search for tab x on this one i'll put max Lumi 2. now talking about screen modes this one is clearly defaulted into a different screen mode than the tab x so it is currently in the normal mode so let's go into the speed mode speed mode is going to be the first level on the max Lumi of prioritizing frames per second over clarity that's that one and this one is currently in ultra fast so if we go into balanced which is the kind of equivalent mode you can hopefully see even there getting a lot higher frames per second on the tab x neither look bad if we go down to the data sheet, you can see very, very similar, exact same screen, Mobius Carter 1250, same size, same dot per inch, same processor on paper, whether that's actually a slightly different actual processor, but they're, they're both 1.8 gigahertz octa-cores, both got six gigabytes of RAM, both 128 gigabytes, battery smaller, considerably smaller, 2000 milliamp hours, bigger on the Tab X. So the thickness of this one, 10.9 millimeters, thickness of this one, 6.8. So yes, yeah, so I can definitely see that difference. And it isn't just actually, it isn't just the screen sticking out. It is actually the size of the bucket itself as well. It is a wider bucket on the Max Lumi. So you are getting a much thinner tablet and then everything else is the same. Although the Tab X has a G sensor, whereas the Max Lumi 2 doesn't. So for browsing, there is a definite advantage of having that GPU. There is no doubt about that. Let's go into the fastest modes for both. And you can see a lot more degradation here on the Max Lumi and less so here on the Tab X. Yeah, there's, you've lost so much contrast here on the Max Lumi. I'm not sure if that's really coming across on the screen so much. I'm gonna up the brightness to show that a little bit better, I think. The Tab X in its speed mode is doing a lot better. Look at the difference in the contrast between the black areas on either device. You're getting a lot more ghosting on the Lumi. Wow, that's actually cleared up really quite nicely. Really quite hard to read here on the Max Lumi. So the Tab X, is a clear winner there for browsing. So same just about everything apart from the GPU and the battery, but that's clearly making quite a difference there. Back into something that looks all right. <laughs> Maybe even back into HD or normal mode, as it's called here. We'll give both a refresh. Now the other, the other difference is not a hardware difference, it's a software difference, but if I go into the Notes app, there is a difference between the way they handle pencil. So there is no tilt function here on the Max Lumi or the Max Lumi 2, but there is now pencil tilt here on the Tab X, which I think is absolutely fantastic. You can see the thickness is changing, not just by pressure, the darkness is changing by pressure here, very nicely. But the tilt is actually changing the thickness here. And that leads to an absolutely excellent drawing experience on the Tab X. Here's one that I drew recently. And here's one that I drew on this, the Lumi. You can see it is having a little bit of a harder time actually rendering that. But the actual effect is certainly doesn't leave anything to be desired here on the Lumi. It's perfectly good. So although it didn't have the tilt, I was still able to get a really nice effect using the different brush types on the books platform. I really want to see them bring a drawing app. I think that'd be absolutely fabulous. The next thing I want to try out on both is the actual screen sharing modes. A lot of people seem to be interested in using these devices as secondary screens. Now on the Max Lumi 1, which this one is, you can actually use a HDMI input, but on the Tab X, that's gone and we actually went on the Max Lumi 2. I'm going to have to find a different way of getting my screen to share to the Tab X. So I'm gonna start by wired with the Max Lumi. So let's get that set up. So to use the Max Lumi as a monitor, you plug in HDMI, go to the monitor app, 
There it is, simple as that really. It is running. <laughs> Obviously there isn't the two way, you know, really tempting to think that you can use the two way kind of control it over here, but you can't do that. Installing Space Desk on here to try it with the app in a second as well. It looks pretty good actually. It does have different modes, so text mode for instance, if I was in a Word document, you can see we've lost some kind of quality there. Or oh, I've come out of the whole thing. It really is quite quick to go into monitor mode. I suggest we're probably leaving it in X mode or speed mode maybe. Yeah, and that looks just fine. And you still have access to the refresh button there so you can clean up your monitor at any point. Not bad at all. That is actually a really useful mode. And I, one thing I have been considering doing is just actually leaving the Lumi One set up here as a external monitor. I might well do that as a sort of middle one here. Give my eyes a bit of a break while I'm working. And now if they're going second hand for a sort of 500 quid, then that might be a good option actually, rather than paying for the full books mirror devices. So that could be an option. And you could leave it plugged into USB-C and HDMI long term. Might, might well do that. Next thing, well, let's try the actual Max Lumi without the cable now, but with the Space Desk app. And let's compare that to the Brooks Tab X. So just installed Space Desk, there we are. Ah, uh -huh, it's already found me, that's really good. Wow, that really was quick, I hardly did anything. I wasn't really expecting it to be quite so smooth. One thing you do notice here, uh, I hope you can see this is, that in fact it isn't using the full area of the screen because this isn't the same aspect ratio as an ordinary 1080p screen. So let's go ahead and go and type something here. And that doesn't look as good. Which ink mode am I in? I'm in normal mode. So I'm gonna go onto the speed mode, see if that looks any better. No is your answer, no, this isn't gonna be, the space desk on here on the Max Lumi is not going to be a pleasant experience. I'm going to be entirely honest with you. Refreshing it does bring it to sort of being okay, but you're gonna constantly be sort of thinking to yourself what size it needs to be on this screen to show okay on this e-ink screen here. Right, let's try that on the Tab X then. I can say though, it is remarkably easy to use space desk. Great job by them. And I'm obviously gonna to have to rotate this to make it look in any way sensible. That looks better. Yeah, that is a massive improvement. What mode am I in currently? I'm currently in HD mode, so I would obviously be using balance mode normally. Okay, there is a lag in typing, that is very, very true. If, you're gonna, if you want to type directly onto the Tab X, then you're gonna type directly onto the Tab X and you're not gonna have the lag caused by it having to load up Space Desk. But now as a second screen, that is actually usable. Let's have a little think about it, can I? I can do external display, can I? Yes, I can. And now it's automatically filled the screen. That's much better. And I'm sure you could do that on the Lumi as well, of course. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. That's actually communicating as an input as well. All right, that's more than I thought it would do. You can even use the pen input. Great job, Space uh, Desk. That is absolutely fabulous. I'm sure you can do that but on the Lumi as well. That is a really useful application. I was expecting this to sort of be okay. I was expecting it to be a sort of viable second monitor, but not actually to have the two-way communication there. So yeah, I'm actually really pleasantly surprised about this. And now I'm thinking to myself, I could very much, although you know, you're not gonna want to draw as much in this because it does have that extra latency. The fact that it can do it, you can sign documents for instance with it. All of a sudden, this makes much more sense as a sort of travel companion because you can have your main laptop and then have this as a second screen that you can actually do that two-way communication with as well. I'm really impressed with that. So there we are, so let's talk conclusions then. Tab X versus the Max Lumi. And overall it just feels like a more solid device. It feels thinner, 
it looks whiter and it has that more even lighting. I mean, this is just an absolutely fantastic device. I'm gonna be using it for a little bit longer and come back with my full review. What I can say is that the Tab X is a fabulous piece of hardware. And if you are on a Max Lumi or a Max Lumi 2, there are definite reasons to upgrade to the Tab X. So yeah, there is no doubt that there's an improvement in the hardware from the Max Lumi up to the Tab X and from the Max Lumi 2 up to the Tab X also. But at a very similar time as the Tab X was released, the Tab Ultra C was released. And this was really a game changer. I know we use that term quite a lot on online reviews, but the Tab Ultra, did change the way that I use the ink. I relied on it now more for writing. I relied on it now more for things that I would normally do on a laptop, like emailing or working on web apps. Sure, you can do some of that with the Tab X if you were to set up yourself a little typing station somewhere to mount this as a vertical screen, and it would do a great job of that. But of course, you are going to miss that color. This is the absolute pinnacle of what an e-ink tablet should be. You're gonna notice the impact in life when you switch over to read in full-size academic PDFs on this, the Books Tab X. When you start annotating them on them directly with this wonderful Wacom EMR stylus, it's gonna change your professional life. The only question about this tablet is what else books have brought out and what they're likely to bring out in the near future. The only question is, is it as good as the Tab Ultra C, which is something else entirely. This is the best of what e-ink tablets are, but e-ink tablets are about to be transformed into something new. E-ink tablets are becoming better than an iPad for your productivity needs. The question is, is this tablet the best of the old style e-ink tablets? And should you therefore buy this one because that's an excellent category of device? Or should you actually be looking now to buy the Ultra C? Will you buy this one or buy the Ultra C and then in a few short months, they're gonna replace this with a Tab X Ultra C with a color e ink screen at this size and that keyboard case that the Tab Ultra has? Then all of a sudden, you have everything. And I can understand that's like thinking, well, I bought this thing and then it's just been replaced very quickly. But right now books are innovating and that's exciting, seeing them develop this category of devices very quickly. So will that device, when it's this size, a Tab X Ultra, so it's got the keyboard case, C, so it's got the color, will that actually be the iPad killer? That device could just be wow. And now that color ink is so much more usable, will Apple themselves enter the game and actually blow this category of device out of the water with their incredible software? If they can make iOS and iOS apps running just as well on ink screens, perhaps a smaller innovative company like Books might find that a little bit difficult. But right now, the Books Tab X solves so many problems for professionals and it does it incredibly well. Let's look into how I've scored the Tab X on my comparison tables and chat about the standout uses and any surprises. And the best place that you can go and actually make direct comparisons between e-ink tablets is the website eWritable.com and you can pull up my comparison data based on my professional use or you can make comparisons of the technical specifications of these devices. So reading, this is an incredible device if you want to digitally read full-size academic documents. It's an eight for reading and learning, just as the Max Lumi 2 was. I like on this large size that you can actually have a split view book notebook. Now this is a dedicated book notebook for me to make my notes about this one in a separate notebook here. But also of course, any annotations that I make on here, I can directly export as well. This is a great device for innovation and creation, equal with the Tab Ultra C, and just one behind the iPad. For black and white drawing, it's incredible. The iPad admittedly has the power to run so many full multimedia apps. But drawing on here in black and white is absolutely fabulous. And you do now get the pencil tool with tilt as well. And different shades of gray. For black and white drawing, I would prefer to draw on this rather than the iPad. But of course the iPad has the edge when it comes to color. So it is probably just below the Tab Ultra C when it comes to looking across all different use cases, but it's an incredible device. And if you know you want full-size documents, this is the one to go for. For work, it's incredible. 
it's a nine, but it's difficult to recommend it over the Tab Ultra C without a keyboard case. So you can, and you should in my opinion, set yourself up a little dock on your desk with a keyboard permanently plugged in. And then you've got a great place on your desk where you can sit and type and use the wonderful word processor they've added. Or you can use a word processor of choice. And you can still use the book's voice recognition or the handwriting recognition too. And one other thing, you could use this with Space Desk. And it would actually just become a monitor from your main computer. This is something that I'm using quite a lot these days. And you can see now it's just another monitor for my computer and even touch works as well of course you can get around it with the mouse or the keyboard so what i do love about books devices it just gives you all of the options you could want it gives you the flexibility to use it for work in a way that suits you and that's why it is just really close behind the books tab ultra c in terms of the use cases the software and the hardware and the, the company experience is very close to the Tab Ultra C as well. Tab Ultra C is still winning out that because having that keyboard case just gives it a slightly better use with other apps. Presenting is another standout feature of the Tab X because you could have PowerPoint open in split screen with your notes. And the PowerPoint app itself gives you the option of presenter view. So you can actually see your notes that you've typed into PowerPoint itself. And then you can annotate with a pen on the screen at the top. Or you could just use Space Desk and have it mirror the main presentation screen. And you can annotate on top of that therefore, or just swipe to move forward or backward on the PowerPoints. So for presenting, you can see I've given it an eight. In terms of the apps that come on it, the Books Notes app is pretty fully featured if it's a little bit complex at times and sometimes unintuitive but it is great to have that full size for your notebooks so it's a seven for that the reading app is one of the best in its class it's a nine there and i've got loads of content talking about how good that is with things like article mode or the side by side view with the notebook although you really won't need article mode unless you want to read in the split screen which well maybe you do using other apps is the best thing about the books tab series because they are the best platform for handling the conversion of essentially an app which is designed for lcd or oled and converting onto an e-ink screen it gives you the option with the different screen modes so that you can customize the experience to the way that works best in each app for you. So it's an eight for other apps, just lagging behind the Tab Ultra C because having that color and having that keyboard does make using third party apps even better. Mainly the Tab X answers the problem of working all day on LCD or OLED screens. If you want to work without so much paper in your life and having to move between digital and analog, then this is the ideal digital analog device. This is e at its very best. With a rapid refreshing screen, you're getting the benefits of a digital space, but you're doing it on a paper-like screen. And that for me, that's where we're aiming with this category of tech, is actually bridging that gap between digital and analog not with a workaround, but with an ideal mix of the two. It has a rapid refreshing screen that looks crisp and clear. This is a space to use all of your apps, to work on your files and to manage your email, to do your professional learning, to collaborate and to just take notes and move them directly and integrate them directly into any and all of your workflows, anything that's supported by Android tablets. What books have done here is they've created a place for you to work, which is tactile like traditional paper, but integrated with all of your web-based storage and all of those excellent digital features that we've just come to know and rely on with our phones and our tablets and our computers. And it's great for drawing. It could be your digital sketchbook, and I suggest that you'll enjoy it more than you will an iPad. Sure, you'll miss the colors. Maybe that's coming in future updates. The screen real estate though lets you run apps simultaneously side by side. You could have your reading and your notes side by side, or you could have your reading in a dedicated notebook, or you could be running Microsoft PowerPoint and one and presenting that to an external screen, keeping your notes visible on the other side of the screen. You can set up your own space on a desk where you can plug this into a wired or wireless keyboard and you can type away directly into the text note or directly into Google Docs or Microsoft Word. You can have your own set of work instance apps. So essentially a second version of Outlook, a second version of Word hooked up into your work account rather than your personal files. And then you can have your own instance for your own personal file and you can have screen widgets. Most of all, you just got that space to work. That space to lay out your thoughts and the size that you're used to. If you're used to using this size of notebook, just don't compromise on space. Go for this. Although many people have said that it's quite heavy and it is, 
but it's not heavy for its size. Picking this up next to an iPad or a similar sized laptop, you won't think that this is heavy. It's not gonna be really any heavier than a paper notepad of this size. And it's only 100 grams heavier than the Tab Ultra. It's over 100 grams less than the big iPad. Pick this up next to one of the smaller books devices and your brain will kind of trick you into thinking that this is lighter than that because you're expecting it to be heavier. This is the A6 device and of course it's much lighter than this A4 device but in terms of heaviness for size, this is lighter than this. In any case, it's probably gonna live lying flat here on the desk or propped up for a better viewing angle. Still not really worked that out, but yeah, like that. I know I'm geeking out a little bit too enthusiastically maybe, but I honestly do think that this is the height of the ink tech right now. And until they bring out an A4 color books device, this is the one. This, if your main purpose is academic reading or is using apps side by side, get this device. So I was expecting to find it more cumbersome to lug this around at work, but I didn't. I actually found it fitted really well into my work life. It's kind of the same size as a laptop, so I could carry the two together. All of that screen real estate was really, really beneficial. So if you're somebody that likes to write into a notepad and at the same time as that, have a book open, well, you can do that in the split screen mode here on the tablet. Of course, you can do that on any books device. Neo Reader is an excellent reading app and allows you to do this. But here, you've essentially got two 10.3 inch screens side by side. It's, of course, like a full sheet of A4 paper, one side for reading and the other side for notes. And as I make notes into a PDF, I can have two pages of that same PDF and not necessarily just the two pages that are sequentially next to each other. So you can be referring back to notes that you made earlier on in the week. Or of course, you can have a book open and another notebook, a PDF notebook, or of course a notebook. And that notebook can be directly linked to the book and always be available just with one or two touches from that book's menu. I mean, it's so powerful. It really is the place for academic reading. And that's why I said at the top of the video, if you know this size fits into your workflow, look no further. This is the best thing you can get at this size. It must be said though, that now there is color ink and we haven't yet seen a color ink device at this size. Now that books are doing keyboard cases with trackpads as well, perhaps we're gonna see that at this size and we're gonna get even closer to laptop-like functionality in an e-ink tablet. I personally can't wait for that. But one thing this is certainly excellent for is drawing. So let's dive in and see how I found it for drawing in an A4 e-ink sketchbook. Fabulous. Drawing on the Tab X is an absolutely great time. There's nothing like it as a black and white e-ink sketchbook. The sheer size of it means that you can make those large pen strokes. Now with the Tab series, you've got the excellent GPUs really speeding up the strokes and making everything render so much faster. And the white space clears really quickly whenever you move the image around. So you've got a great experience of drawing on a really crisp looking screen. Okay, compared to the smaller Tab Mini C or Tab Ultra or other e-ink tablets that are out there, you do have a slightly lower resolution at this size. You've only got a little bit above 200 pixels per inch at this size but you don't really notice that because you do sit with your head slightly further back from a larger screen like this and it just looks absolutely crystal clear. One other thing that books added when they brought out the tab lineup with the GPUs was tilt with the pen. So if you're used to drawing with pencils, you'll feel right at home having firstly the great pressure sensitivity of the Wacom EMR stylus that you get on all books tablets, but also now the tilt function to give you different line thicknesses when you tilt the pencil at different angles, just like a real pencil. And one thing to note on the Tab X is that you don't have magnetic cases. And actually for drawing, that's a good thing because magnetic cases can actually interrupt the accuracy of the Wacom EMR stylus at certain points on the screen. There is very little that compares to drawing on this size with this kind of accuracy 
with the Wacom EMR stylus. It's just a real pleasure. The Tab X and the whole Tab series do not ship with a paper feeding screen protector. I for one don't really mind that. It's a very comfortable screen protector which is on there with a little bit of a textured feeling and a slight amount of friction. But it's not like a paper feeling and it's not like a remarkable feeling either. That does also mean though that you don't wear down the nib so easily and that also means that you do get slightly better clarity because matte screen protectors, texture screen protectors, they do interrupt the clarity of the screen slightly. Certainly with the large area you are trading off the color so you could go down to the Tab Ultra C or Tab Mini C now. You could have 300 dots per inch on the black and white and 150 dots per inch full color screen but the fact that books don't actually give you access to the full gamut of colors on those devices means I don't think you're missing all that much and the trade-off of very large screen re real estate for colors I would take most of the time because if I'm sketching I will tend to be looking to sketch in black and white and if I want to add color I can always go ahead and edit that vector based PDF afterwards on my computer on Adobe Fresco or Photoshop or any other software like that. I think as a kind of first stage pencil drawing, this is an excellent digital sketchbook and I can't wait to carry it to some museums and do some actual drawing. I'm gonna have a really good time doing that, I'm sure. You can have five different pencil presets here in the book's note-taking app and you can also use up to five layers. And although the book's note-taking app is fine for drawing, it isn't perfect. And you do get to the point that after you've got a lot of ink on the screen, you do get to the point where it says large volume of notes and it's rendering, because this is a primarily note-taking app rather than a drawing app. And I really have a bit of a plea for books to bring us a full drawing app for these tablets so we can really use the full power. Right now it is not currently working really really well with other third party drawing apps like I wish I could tell you that Autodesk Sketchbook would work really well here on the Tab X but it doesn't. It's only really the book's own brand apps that use the specific e-ink pen recognition appy that are actually really really geared up for drawing. So right now you're, if you're going to draw on these tablets you're going to be drawing in this note taking app here. What's on the wish list for that full drawing app? I would really love to see more options for artistic pens and brushes and pencils, different maybe wet looking media and different blending options, not just between layers, but between different tools as well. This would really unlock the potential of these amazing e-ink tablets. There are of course workarounds though, because it's vector based, you can actually go ahead and edit every single stroke if you wish after the, after the effect, after you've exported it. But also one could go ahead and export one layer at a time. So you can choose to export just the visible layers for instance, and then you could blend those layers within something like Photoshop. So there are options to use this as I say, as a start point for your digital Art. I don't think you can finish a piece of digital art on Tab X or the Tab Mini C like you could, for instance, on an iPad. But right now, it's definitely a recommend. If you're someone that likes to draw on e ink, if you're someone into digital art, then have a go with one of these tablets. They are great fun to draw on. So as you can see from that, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this as an e-ink sketchbook. It's a great place to start digital art. And then of course you could export that and work it up on a computer as well, if you liked. Or it can just be a wonderful place to keep all your sketches. If you're somebody who likes to sketch out their ideas or somebody who actually likes to create art, this is a no brainer. I'm often debating in my videos, which is the best e-ink tablet. And when I made this next section of the video, it certainly was between the Tab X and the Tab Ultra C. Since then, we can look at the Note Air 3C and that has a viable case to be called the best ink tablet that you can get right now. But this is certainly designed as a note-taking tablet. Whereas these two, the Tab Ultra and the Tab X, are really going for this new category of ink productivity device. But in any case, in this next section of the video, I'm gonna set out the reasons why books devices should be your number one consideration for what you can get in e-ink. 
which is the very best eating device you can buy right now. It's got to be between these two, right? The Tab X or the Tab Ultra C. Eating tablets, they tend to have amazing battery life and they are so easy on the eyes, as easy as paper. The problem for some time now though has been that ink is considered slow. Uh, the whole screen needs to be refreshed every time something changes. Well, ink tablets have got around that by using more local refreshing. And many companies have got it to the point where these excellent Wacom EMR styluses have latency below 20 milliseconds, which you really do struggle to notice that when you're just writing naturally. But when they bypass the global refreshes, they have struggled with the issue of image retention or ghosting as is often known. But watch closely. Can you see that? Did you see what it did there? Yeah, that's right. Books have found a way to give you both things at once, a fast refresh mode and a clear image. It clears up the white areas and the blocks of color without affecting the whole of the screen. This is game changing for e-ink tablets. And honestly, one of the largest downsides of e-ink tablets has been solved. But have they done so at the cost of one of the biggest benefits of e-ink? So I said that the Tab Ultra was the best e-ink tablet when it came out. This is the Tab Ultra. It's the black and white version of the Tab Ultra C. It was a different format and books were marketing it as a tablet PC. Many of us are waiting for books to make a Windows machine. But for now, what that marketing language translates to is that the Tab Ultra was capable of actually being usable for just about every Android app. And this includes Office or productivity apps. This is the black and white version of the Tab Ultra and this is the Tab Ultra C. Very similar devices except for the color screen. I think you get ever such a slight faster latency with the Tab Ultra, but both of them have amazing low latency. So when the Tab Ultra came out, it was the best. But then the Tab X came out and immediately I compared it with the Max Lumi, which is the previous generation of 13.3 inch e-ink tablets. I mean, these things are huge. Their screens are pretty much the same size as A4 paper or letter size paper. And the conclusion was that they're both brilliant, that the Tab X was just an iteration, just an improvement on the already fantastic Max Lumi 1 that I had to compare. It really showed how far ahead of the competition that Books really is. And then the Tab Ultra C arrived, and for many people, it became the pinnacle of what an e-ink tablet has to offer. It bought 300 dots per inch in black and white, and is capable of displaying 256 colors all at 150 DPI. I'm converted, and so have been so many reviewers who previously had disregarded e-ink altogether, and certainly had disregarded color e-ink. And honestly, my my only issue at the moment is that I can't use it all of the time because I'm often testing out other devices. Images look good, apps designed for LCD and OLED, they look good as well. Standard Android apps that are designed for LCD and OLED, they use color to distinguish between a lot of the buttons and panels. So suddenly these were a lot more usable. And sure, photos and videos do look way better on OLED, but it's just fine for reading the news or reading magazines. It gives you something of a newsprint type of look, which is actually quite pleasant. Some people said it almost looks like the magic papers, the moving images in Harry Potter on the newspapers. E-ink is trending up right now as so many professionals realize that they have a space in their lives for one more digital device. And that when they start using an e-ink tablet, it doesn't just become a little help, or a plaything, but it becomes something indispensable, something that they cannot look back from. I'm definitely at that point with an e-ink tablet. I can't go back. And honestly, just about any of the e-ink tablets that I've used would suffice, would fill that gap in my tech bag. Even big name tech YouTubers like Aaron from Mr. Who This The Boss is a real convert to Remarkable. And he's someone who likes the best in bleeding edge tech, which for a long time has been which can be the biggest, the brightest OLED screen. Even he is liking the Remarkable because it's something that can only do so many things and so you only do so many things on it. It's your place to write your notes and just that. But then many of us became addicts of the e-ink screen experience and we want to do more. And so the natural progression is an e-ink tablet which lets you use whichever app you want. Books devices are leaders in this category. With the Note Air 2 being the first place that you truly felt you could do a good enough job of tablet type tasks like browsing or accessing cloud files. The problem was that the screen ghosting made it unusable for some apps. 
you have the choice between slow and clear or fast with lots of image degradation. It's really not until you see them side by side that you really see how much of an improvement we've got now with the Tab Ultra series. This is in its speed mode. So let's go to its very fastest mode. This does move quite quickly, but you can see that image degradation there. And you notice how in this white space here, we've still got the ghost of the previous image. It's in its fastest mode on this side. And you can see the way that ghost of that same image just clears up immediately. I move the thing. Same it is with the photo here as well, with the block of color space. It just tidies everything up and it looks fantastic. You can make it look good here on air again, and you can hit the refresh whenever you want. But wow, you can see there's a, such a big difference. In this normal mode, you can see it does a whole screen refresh more regularly to tidy things up. And here, the equivalent to normal mode is the balance mode, and you can just see the way it clears things up afterwards. It's really very clever. It's night and day at the moment. So on these latest e-ink devices from Books, the Tab series, they actually use their GPUs, the graphics processing unit, to actually clean up the image without having to do that full page refresh. And this means that for far more of the time, you're enjoying crisp graphics and text. And this is a battle for the top spot <laughs> between two Books devices. I'm going to do a bit of a breakdown, but one place that an e-ink tablet is most certainly at home is in a meeting. Both the Books Tab Ultra and the Tab X are great in meetings, like the IPVO Totem 360, 180, and 120, which cover all the angles that are in their names. And whilst I'm telling you about IPVO, you can have a closer look at how the Tab Ultra C performs, browsing the internet and running different apps through the IPVO Totem 120. Thanks so much to IPVO for sponsoring this video. Perhaps you've been in a hybrid meeting and you've had that awkward moment where you're having to turn a laptop around to point it at whoever's speaking. Perhaps you have a meeting camera for your conference room, but it's a pain to set up and and it keeps disconnecting. Perhaps relying on the one microphone in your laptop is making group meetings a disjointed and unnatural experience. Perhaps the cost of boardroom cameras has actually stopped you buying one. Well, IPVO have sponsored me to tell you about their new totem range of meeting room cameras. They can make an immersive meeting room environment and they can keep single or multiple people in view and intelligently cover the whole of a small or medium sized meeting room. Bring the team together in seconds with plug and play into a single USB port with no need to install software. The microphones are quality and they include built-in noise reduction. It's amazing how little reverb you get even in a large space. And best of all, they do this at an excellent price. Check out the links in the description for my videos demonstrating their products and links to the products on the IPVO website. So did you see that? Chrome looks really good, right? The only problem now is that graphics processor is very energy hungry. And so the battery life is much shorter here than in the previous generation of books devices, despite the batteries being a lot bigger. So don't just look at the battery size in any list of specifications because different devices do use that battery in different ways. Firstly, which is better in a meeting? Well, at first glance, it's probably gonna be the larger device here. Real estate could be really useful in capturing notes. You could have a notes page on one half of the screen and you could have a reference page on the other half of the screen. That could be a very useful thing in the meeting. Both have the ability to use microphones which you could use in conjunction with an app like Otter AI to actually capture your meeting minutes and transcribe them live. Or of course you can just use the onboard voice typing within the books keyboard which is actually really quite accurate. Does it do a better job compared to Otter? Capture your meeting minutes and transcribe them live pretty good. You can do that on both of them. So you could actually very easily keep a set of notes and actions that you make within the meeting. And both can share the screen to Miracast and use the full Android version of PowerPoint. And you can use full presenter view when you present and you can make annotations as you go. But I probably think that it is just the Tab Ultra C which wins out for meetings. Because even though you can use voice typing and things like this, you'll probably be wanting to use the keyboard to make those edits to the notes that you are capturing. And I do hope that we get a 13.3 inch with a keyboard case soon from Books. You'd think that the Tab X would be easily better for art. The Tab Ultra was the first of the Books devices to use Tilt with the Wacom pen. The Tab X has that A4 size drawing canvas. It does have Auto rotate, but it's off the minute. So I've rated this a nine for art now, but the Tab Ultra C of course brings color. So I've rated it a nine for art as well. What does a 10 look like? Probably once they've gone ahead and given us a full drawing up, that would be a 10. It's actually something that I drew on the Tab Mini C made a video about that recently, but it looks right at home here on the Tab Ultra C as well. A 10 would probably be something of that size, 
where there actually is a dedicated drawing app where we can actually use any color that we wish. Looks really smart on there, right? The Tab X doesn't really make much of an improvement for reading PDFs over the Lumi 2, for academic reading at least. They're both a nine, but for reading directly on the web, it's a little bit different. It's a little better because of the way it clears up the white space. Who knows really what a 10 looks like for reading? Maybe if we could eventually get this kind of performance in a package that's the same weight, just as light as the Sony DPT-1 was. Maybe color ink as well at this size because so many academic PDFs use color for figures. And Remember, sure, this is as no good as your bedtime reader, but that's a whole different category of device, really. The Tab Ultra C doesn't make the best reader. It's chunky and it's heavy, and its best feature, for me at least, the keyboard case makes it heavier still and awkward to carry. And although the 300 DPI black and white is nice, as a pure reader, the black and white screens are still just better. But the Tab Ultra C is the more up-to-date design out of the two. It's the more versatile. It's the more capable of more workflows, and it is the one that I would recommend to most people. It's also less expensive than the Tab X, and I actually think that it's a bargain. The ink screens are just not cheap yet. If you are looking for a way to make the choice, I would say that if you're looking for something to read A4 size books, or if you're looking for a large sketching area and are very happy with black and white, go for the Tab X. But for every other use case, go for the Tab Ultra C. So what's got the number one spot? I think I've got this right it's the Tab Ultra C. And honestly, there are only really two reasons for you not to choose one of these two e-ink tablets right now. Do you desperately need longer battery life? Sure, I can see it, I do miss it. Using these two devices, you're back to charging sort of every three days, which was like the first remarkable. So either one of the earlier books devices will still give you that great battery life, or the Scribe, or the Remarkable, or the A5X. But maybe you do need something which is focused on one task. For example, focused on reading, go for the scribe, or for writing, go for the supernote, or focused on notes, go for the remarkable. Everyone else, go for a books. And right now, the choice is between size or color. It's as simple as that. If you need to know a little bit more about both of these tablets, then here are my full reviews of them on the screen now. Let me know which one you choose and let me know how you get along with it. And right now, I think the choice is still the same. It's size or color. Do you want this smaller size or do you want the larger one? And do you need color? I think if money was no object, you might well go for the smaller one and the very largest, because you would have everything covered by that. But if you just wanted one device and you wanted to keep everything on that one device, then perhaps look at the Note F3C. And I've got lots of content in these two videos where I discuss that.